Okay, everybody's here. So let's talk about AI. Um, uh, I apologize for that, but I just wrote AI to, in order that you come to my session because it's just a buzzword. <laughs> no, I, I, I want to, to talk with you during one hour about what we can very truly call AI and just begin by a, a quick definition uh, in four, uh, four criteria. I called it the AI detector. When you um, you read some magazine, when you listen to some uh, TV, uh, I want to say bullshit, not <laughs> some TV uh, um, emissions, you you can uh, use these four criteria to know if it's really AI or it, it's not. First of all, um, an AI, and we call it a, an agent, an agent of AI, uh, must perceive um, his environment. Uh, it means that uh, an AI uh, must have some vision, some captors for visions, for uh, to um, to listen to to sounds. Um, that's the, the first uh, the first criteria. Next, uh, uh, an AI must analyze the information um, it just collects with uh, with the captors. Three, the AI uh, has to use knowledge. And four, he has to make decisions. With these four criteria, you can say, yes, it's sure it's an AI. Okay? Let's uh, play a little game. Um, I will show you four pictures, and you have to say, uh, yes, okay, it's AI, or no, it's not an AI. It's okay? You, you, you can win some stickers. <laughs> if you like stickers. <laughs> I've got stickers. Um, okay, first one. What do you think about that? It's a chatbot. Is it AI or it's not? Who says, just put your hands uh, up, the chatbot is AI? <coughs> okay, who says the chatbot is not an AI? Depends on the answer, what he's doing. You win? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, be careful. Be careful. Uh, in my opinion, the chatbot is not an AI because uh, it's just uh, some if then else um, programmation. It's not not to shoot through um, through AI um, because it, you can't really perceive the environment with a with a chatbot. Um, it's it's only um, some some programming um, case, and it's not really a, an AI in in my opinion. Second one that we called in the Microsoft. Uh, Environments that we call the custom custom vision AI. Just turn it up. <laughs> Not an AI. Who oh, want to win the sticker? <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I, I think it's not the, the four the four criteria because um, okay that's uh, computer vision. We can see that there are people on the picture. We can see that. Um, uh, a, a train, uh, but that this one can't make decision. Um, to have a real AI, we, we have to, to make decision. So if the if they were to say these are people and that's a train, then you're talking about AI. Is that what you're saying? Um, if I have to, um, if I have a, a larger uh, application, we can uh, make the decision to take the train, for example. It would it, it will, would be a real AI. I, I give you a sticker. <laughs> okay, uh, third, that's not a Microsoft uh, application. <laughs> is it? it um, is it an AI? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right, and you will come at, at, at the end of the session. We'll come and, and take stickers. And last, <laughs> last question: Is it AI? <laughs> I'm not sure. And that's um, the goal of this session. Uh, I want to, to talk with you about um, Power BI and AI. Uh, it's maybe a, a mistake. Um, but wh what's the, the real category of, uh, of Power BI? It's a, um, well, in France, we, we like to have discussions, and it's always a discussion with uh, the Club Power BI. Um, is it a self-service BI tool? Is it a data prep tool? Is it a visualization tool? Is it a statistical tool? Uh, an analytics tool? I'm just, I, I've got one only conviction. We need method. 
And this talk is only about method. Okay. And a really good method, I hope. Um, this session is without code, but without magic, and only with method. My name is Paul Peton. Um, I work in France uh, for a company called Azeo, and I'm a Microsoft AI MVP. But I'm uh, I, I like Power BI, <laughs> and I'm a member of the Club Power BI French Association, uh, the GUS uh, SQL Server, uh, and I'm a French leader uh, of the global global AI community. Um, there's a, some some link uh, the, you can search uh, on Google global AI community. There's a lot of, of things about uh, customer vision, custom vision, or, or so. So what's, um, is intelligence really artificial? I think it's better to say that it's applied than artificial. And in this talk, we are really talking about an old buzzword. <laughs> Remember in uh, um, four, four years, five or, or 10 years before, uh, we are talking about data science. And another maybe buzzword for later, that's that I will call infused AI. Um, that's integration of some tools coming from mathematics, statistics, data science, or really AI uh, that we are that we will find in Power BI. I, I'm a data scientist, and what's the approach I wanted to share with you is that when we are in front of a dashboard, we have to define the target. Uh, it, it's it's only a business case. Uh, I want to, to I, I have to, to determine what's the, the target of my study. Uh, if I'm the organizer of the, this event, uh, maybe the, the target is uh, the number of attendees. Okay, so the, the main thing I, I want to, to, to look. And when the target is defined, uh, we have to find some features. Uh, features is it's to the, the term of data science. In BI, we say fields, columns, okay, but it's the same. Uh, we say features. We have to find some features to explain the target. We have to find some correlations, okay. Um, that's because we want to explain why today's audience is very well, I think. Um, what's can, what could be the, the features explaining this, uh, this target? Uh, the launch was very good, maybe, or... <laughs> You like your yellow yellow shirts? <laughs> I don't know, but we have to find some uh, some features explaining the target, and that's what we call it in data science. That's we call it create a model, and it's just some mathematic functions um, to explain the target by some features. Okay, one of the most difficult thing in data science is to um, to find the real good features explaining the target. We have many, many features in front of us, and we have to, to choose. But we can be helped by uh, Power BI. When, well, I think all, all of us um, practice BI every day, um, and we ask uh, always the same question. I, uh, I write this here, four questions. Um, first of all, I doubt uh, the data quality. I'm not sure that my data is, is really, really good, uh, but I want to check it before I, uh, I begin to study the, the target uh, feature. Second question, uh, I look at the KPI, is going down or up maybe, but I want to understand why. We, we always want to understand it when it's down, <laughs> but we have to do it even if it's up. We have many, many data, it's big data, um, so we have many detailed elements, uh, too much information. Um, how can I summarize this information? And last question, um, we have data from the past, okay? We can look at the data in the past, but we want to know what will happen in the future. So we want to predict, not the past, but the future. Okay, that's four real uh, classical questions. I will give you some tools to answer this, these questions. So um, the agenda is really, really easy. One, understand. 
to summarize three predict. Okay, so that's the three points we are going to, to see in this uh, in this talk. And to have to some data is more concrete to to to, um, to make some some demonstrations. I will take uh, some uh, French sorry French uh, French open data um, about some um, uh, accident corporal that's a um, fatal accident. Uh, sorry, it's not so. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, it's a quite good uh, data set. With this data set, I, I just build a, a dashboard, but we are going to, to focus on uh, the data science approach. We want to explain uh, why some accidents are fatal, why, why people uh, died when they are uh, walking on the road, when they take your, their car. But maybe here we are talking about Trottinet, uh, uh, scooter, you can say scooter, I think. What's the wrong approach? Before the, the approach I, I want to share with you. Uh, we have one KPI, it's a target feature, okay? It's how, how much fatal accident, um, and we, we, have to, we want to, to explain this, uh, this number of accidents. In my data set, there are four uh, user types, okay? So I can cross uh, the measure and uh, the dimension. It, uh, I, I get four values, okay? But uh, people are male or female, so uh, I have two genders. Uh, from four values, I go to eight values, okay? Um, I create some bins for the age, 11 bins. So eight um, multiplied by 11, 48. And I have six types of trips, uh, trips to go to, to school, trips to go to, um, to, to for, for some other, other one, fun. I, I don't remember, but six, six of them. And thir uh, 13 uh, regions in France. Okay, <laughs> so the values over nine years of data. Okay, so I don't know how to, to, <laughs> to say it in, in English, but you, you can see with this method, only um, KPIs and measure, uh, KPI and R measure and cross by dimensions, it's very, very difficult to find um, some real good information. Okay, it's not, it's not a, a good method. We have to, to change the approach and for that, um, I propose this matrix with the three times understand, summarize, predict. And we will see some tools of the usual BI, um, some tools of what I called infused AI. Remember, that's um, some data science, some statistical uh, tools, but um, easier to, to, to use in Power BI. And be careful, um, that's a limit here. We can't uh, do a real, real uh, data science uh, work in Power BI. So let's begin with uh, one of the, the easiest tools. The first thing you do when you are a data scientist is to observe what we call the distribution. It's a really uh, simple chart that's called histogram. But um, this chart is not in Power BI. I, uh, you have to, to look for custom visual. Okay, uh, there are three, three of, uh, of them. Um, here is the age, um, the age of the people um, who, who has got a, an accident. Okay, uh, it's from zero to um, 100, uh, 110, I think. Oh, yes, 110. Um, it's only people uh, on trottinet, on scooter. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that um, you do some trottinet after um, 90 years <laughs> old. I'm not sure. But I, I'm, so I have to, to detect some 
extreme values that's we call aberrant I think we can say aberrant too aberrant values um, and what can what what have we have to do with with that but maybe we can accept this value okay there's a foolish old man uh, <laughs> and uh, takes his uh, the trottinette uh, or we can replace replace it I can uh, choose a, a cap uh, over 90 it's always 90 maybe or I can filter okay you can use what you you know to uh, to filter this um, this data from from the data set so that's that's the first the first thing we we do with numerical values when we are our data scientist second um, second thing here uh, that's better infu uh, infused AI uh, who, who knows the key influencers okay I'm not so it, um, I think it appears in February this year or March. I'm not, not sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Let, let's demonstrate what um, the key influencer. Okay. I I want to um, understand the gravity of the accident. Um, I, I will translate for you uh, some, some some things here. Um, that's the key influencer. That's a, this big one, and to to make it work, you have to give one thing. That's the target. Okay. Uh, they say um, people die or not. Okay. Um, so to explain um, if they say is true, people died. <laughs> uh, What's, uh, what, what can the, the, the explanation of, uh, of this? Um, I give here, I give all the features I want. Okay? Um, I take features in my data set, some, some fields in my data set, and put it in the, in the visual. Here is um, the year of birth, um, user type, uh, gender, uh, the kind of um, trip, equipment of security, um, if it's a pedestrian, um, was he walking uh, on the road or, or not, obviously, so many, many features, and I just want to, to know what's the main features to explain the death, okay? And it's really, really easy. Um, just let compute, and here, um, the most important thing is that people who don't use security equipment, um, they died um, seven, um, but it's just multiplied by seven. Um, if, if, if you don't have, um, I don't know how to say that. Um, Seven times. Seven times. It's seven times upper uh, if you don't have a security equipment. Okay. Oh, so it, it, it's it's not. A, uh, I think it's it's quite um, easy to to understand. But um, you you can see other um, other explanation. Here it's uh, the year of birth. Um, the more people. Um, if people are very old, the older are people, um, the more they have uh, risk to, to, to die. Okay. I just have to, to let um, the visuals tell me the, the story of, uh, of the, target, uh, the target feature. Okay. Um, it's really, really um, performance and it's based on a statistical method that we call um, logistic regression. I don't know if you know, know this, this method, but it's logistic regression, a data science method, just in a visual. Very easy to, to use. Okay, so let's go to my uh, advent uh, calendar. Uh, when you want to understand your data, if you use usual BI, you do some cross between measure and dimensions, you do some charts, but it's not so easy to find the way, the right way to, to explain. Um, with Infuse AI, you can use key influencer. It's really, really um, 
good good visual to, to explain your data. When you're a data scientist, you have some methods like correlations, matrix of correlations, some uh, that we call ANOVA, analysis of variance. Um, we can do that in Power BI. Um, that, that's an example of a statistical test. Uh, I, can, I can say that uh, this population is really, really different of this one because of statistical uh, tests. Okay? But we can do that in Power BI. Um, even if we can do some R code in Power BI, R is a statistical language, but it's not a good idea to put some R code in your Power BI, it's my, in my opinion. Okay, that's um, three ways to, to understand your data. Now we want to um, group some detailed elements. We have to, 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 to group them. And we will use a scatter plot. Uh, who um, is using today a scatter plot in Power BI? Uh, <laughs> okay, it's, it's a very good idea. But we are going to see how to improve the scatter plot. Okay, on this chart, one point is a town in France. Okay. On this axis, um, horizontal axis, it's the number of accidents, and on this one is um, the ratio of death. Okay, um, in this town uh, we have uh, 700 accidents, but that's not very, very um, that's a, with a, not, no gravity because uh, only 10%, maybe less than 10%, are dying in these accidents. Okay. Um, so, but my scatter plot is not, not really uh, beautiful because all, all the points are here. I don't know how to, how to, to understand the difference between this, uh, these points. One point is a term. Yeah. So, first of all, I will... Um, sorry, too, too quickly. I, I, I will... Um, Erased, I will delete, exclude, <laughs> I will exclude some points who are um, extreme or aberrant. Uh, you, you, can death, you can die two times, I think. <laughs> but, uh, so 2000 percent, it's not possible. So it's just it's, it's easy here to, to exclude, exclude the point. Okay? That's data quality. After that, um, I can see that. We have some scale here that's not easy to, to read. I will use a logarithmic scale. Okay? Um, look at this. We are here on 1, 10, 100, 1000. Okay? It's, the points are easier to see with the logarithmic scale. And we can't die two times. <laughs> so, um, I want to, to make some groups of this, uh, this town. I, I want to, to, to have some help from the, the infused AI because there are too, too, much, um, too much towns, too much points on the scatter plot. Uh, but I, I don't know how to, to cut the, this, uh, these points. So, I'm asking for some help here. I will find uh, what we call clusters. Clusters are mm, some um, groups of points, of similar points, similar on two dimensions. Okay, or oh, not really dimensions here, or two, two, uh, two measures. Points, um, um, points who, which are similar. And to do that, um, I have to give the number of cluster I want to have on the, on the chart. Um, I, I can let auto, it, it will um, decide for me, but if I give um, four maybe, well, wh wh why will I, I, I um, say four cluster? Because um, if I work at uh, the Minister of, uh, uh, of Travel, uh, I have to, to make some decisions about uh, security campaigns. Okay, uh, I know I, I, just, uh, I can have uh, four, uh, four security campaigns. Um, for different security campaigns, so I, I will need four clusters of town. Okay, 
uh, it's a business decision only. So let's write four. Okay. The machine is computing. And I will have four colors for the four groups. Okay. Cluster one, two, three, and four. Okay. And now we can uh, make some analysis because the, the blue one up, I think it's um, the, um, the town I, I will never go. It's too, too dangerous. Okay. <laughs> Because when, when you have an accident in this town, you, you are really sure to, to die. <laughs> so so what's, uh, that, that, that's a real good information. Okay. Scatter plot and clustering. Scatter plot is a real, really good idea, and uh, clustering can, be, uh, can give you some, some information. Back to the matrix. When, we are, when you want to summarize some data, you can make business groups um, that you, you, you business or uh, what I call a priori. Um, I know that um, when you're taking the, the train, uh, you have one, um, one price for uh, people between 0 and uh, 25 years, uh, another price for 25 to uh, 60, year, 60 years, and that's uh, business groups, okay? Um, with the clustering, we can do some automated groups. It's an algorithm called k-means. Um, we'll find, we'll find the, the, the groups. But be careful. In Power BI, in the scatter plot, we have only two features. Number of accidents, ratio of deaths. Okay. Um, in your data set, you have many, many, many features. And if you want to use these features to explain um, why, why a, a town is so dangerous, it's a good idea to, to make a cluster, to make clusters, but with more than two dimensions. Okay? But you can't do that in Power BI. If you want to do that, oh, maybe you can use some custom visuals, but these custom visuals uh, comes with R packages, and it's always a little bit dangerous to have too much R packages in, the, um, in your Power BI uh, DBX um, because of some refresh problem after that. But if you can do some R code or Python code, uh, it's a good idea to make clustering over than two dimensions. Okay, next tool. Now we have some um, we have a time series, okay, number of accidents uh, over nine years, I think. And we want to predict. So, uh, in usual BI or in Excel, I, I'm sure that you, you have done it in, in Excel, you have drawn the line. Um, you have some points, some values, um, a curve, and you, you draw the line, okay. Uh, that's what we call the trend, linear trend. Okay, but when we look at real data, sorry, up, yeah. Alors. When we look at real data, we often see some up and down, up and down, up and down. <laughs> That's what we call seasonality. Okay, um, I know that in France, um, in July or August, there are many, many peoples on the road. So there are many accidents. Okay, that's uh, the up point uh, on the curve. Okay. <laughs> if I draw the line, I ju just show you to how to, to do it. It's here. Um, in this menu, we can find trend lines. Okay, remember that it's linear trend. Yeah, and. I can add the trend line uh, over the chart. But be careful. If, if I use that to predict next value, it's always linear. Okay? So I, I lose the seasonality and I don't, um, I will not predict so much accident in July and August because of the linearity of the trend. Okay? But in Power BI, we have a 
really good tool that's called forecast. Okay. And if we do forecast, we have to tell how much points we want to predict. I will talk about it later. We have to tell what the seasonality. I've, I was talking about months, so the seasonality is always, all the, always on 12 points. And I have to give a confidence interval. It's a, um, that, that's, uh, that's here. Because when you predict the future, the future you're, never, you're never sure at 100%. Um, that, that doesn't mean that you are, we are sure at uh, 95 percent. It, it's a more difficult uh, um, indicator to, to interpret, but um, that's really, I think that's really good prediction because we can see that we are on the train, on the train who's going down, and we have the decisional effect too. Okay. So if you have some seasonal uh, time series, it's a very, very good tool. Just one problem. Um, here we can see the predict values. The forecast is uh, 4,080, and it's between uh, uh, 3 and, and 5,000, OK? But I can't have this information in a table. I can't export it. Uh, it's just in, in the tooltip. So one more time, a limit of Power BI. If you want to, to have these values, to, to, to use it in another application, maybe, you, you can't do that with, um, with this, uh, this visual. You, you can do that with Excel. It's, a, it's a good news, but uh, not with Power BI. OK. Um, well, just one thing, one more thing on, on prevision, on prevision on time series. Um, on the forecast length, I just ask 12 months. If you have uh, maybe three or six months in the past, you can't predict the 20 years after that. Okay? Be careful. Uh, just uh, the, the good ratio is one for three. I've got three years, uh, or maybe nine years here, I've got nine years of history. I just uh, can predict on over three years. Okay, don't, don't, don't do uh, more than, than one for three. Who, who, who has um, used this uh, forecast? Yes, yeah. It's quite, it, if your data are on a, a classical um, economic cycle, it's, it's very good. Yeah. The confidence interval is it like a standard deviation? Uh, it's based on the standard deviation, but with some uh, more difficult, most difficult formula, uh, including some coefficient and don't remember that, but, but it's it's uh, based uh, on it. Yeah. And the, the more your your um, your data are uh, dispersed, the, the more the, the standard de deviation is up, uh, is big, um, the more you will have. Uh, a big confidence interval. Yes. Okay, end of the, um, the metrics. Just draw the line for the trend, but remember it's just uh, a linear trend. Time forecast, time series forecast with seasonality, it's, it's a very good idea. And if you want to do better, if you have some time series, uh, some more complex time series, you have to write some code. Sorry, uh, but there are a, a quite good tool today to to find a, a good uh, forecast model that's we called automated machine learning. It's a Microsoft uh, tool. Uh, be careful, Google has uh, another tool called AutoML. In Microsoft, it's automated, and, uh, and you can write some code to um, here. It's some Python code uh, to to make the prediction. Okay. So, um, for the, the, four, the four questions, um, I got the data quality. You can do some histograms. My KPS goes down. Uh, you can use the Kinfluencer. Uh, I have too many points on the scatter plot. Do some clustering. 
and I have time series, try to forecast. Okay, that's four good advice uh, to improve your analytics. Wait, I uh, just want to give you some limits of this approach. With clustering, be careful if you don't do some data quality before um, the cluster, you will have one point, one point per cluster, um, or, or very, very um, a little group of points in just one cluster. So before clustering, always data quality. When you have some um, time series with change of trends, it's more difficult to predict. Uh, the method we have just seen uh, can't predict a, um, a reversal. I think I'm not sure that we call it like that. But what 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 I, I want to do is that if we change of trend many many times, it's very difficult for the the statistical model, and a statistical model will never predict a change of trend. And key influencers. Um, it's really easy to use, but sometimes you will have no insights. Why? Because your data doesn't uh, you don't have uh, any good information to to explain the target. Um, what's the solution in this case? You have to give more data. You have to find some features. You have to uh, maybe to try to, to combine some some features to so give some new information um, if you want to have insight. And uh, last one, uh, I had this slide uh, last month because uh, I don't know if you have seen it in the November version of Power BI. Um, <coughs> in Power Query, now you have this menu with AI transforms, text analytics, uh, vision, and Azure machine learning. Um, that's, um, I, I think that's not a good idea. Um, because you, with text analytics, you can do some sentimental analysis. Uh, I say a sentence, is it bad or good? I'm not sure that it's really, really interesting. Uh, vision, I've got some pictures and it's a computer vision. Uh, on this picture, there is a cat, there's a dog, etc. Uh, do, do you have some pictures in your Power BI dataset? I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and Azure Machine Learning, that's, um, that's some machine learning models that we have built in another tool uh, that we can call um, in Power BI. Uh, I will give, give you an example. But to do that, you will need some premium license. I'm not sure that everybody here has a premium license. And so you need that what we call dedicated capacity. And if you want to, to, to make some prediction with the machine learning, don't forget that you need a specific architecture. Uh, the machine learning, it's two, two steps. First step, I train a model, and then I uh, give prediction. But the, um, the way we use data in Power BI is, is not on, the, on this schema. There's, there's not a, a training time in Power BI and next uh, an evaluation score, a scoring. So if you, have, if you want to do some machine learnings, good architecture is maybe something like that. Um, Power BI at the end of the, of the process, but we will need maybe some uh, compute resource like Azure Databricks. We will need some um, Azure service like Azure Machine Learning um, to store a uh, machine learning model. And we will need something to, ex to expose the model, um, something like Kubernetes. You can see here that it's a more complex architecture, but it works. That's just my job. <laughs> uh, it works, it, but don't do everything in Power BI. So let's conclude, and maybe I have some questions just after that. Data quality is essential, okay? 
um, you have, but you, you know that, I think, you have to clean the data, you have to prepare your data, you have to clean more, <laughs> you have to clean and re-clean. <laughs> we need some uh, referentials, um, maybe a customer referentials. I, I think we have to, to share a referential in, uh, in our um, enterprise. BI and data science, I think it can be better together. And you have four times to, to follow, describe, find explanation, predict, and be prescriptive. Give uh, some advice uh, for your, the users of the dashboard. Okay, it's four important steps in uh, the data science approach. And you can do that in Power BI. And to do some advanced analytics, we will need three things. A data governance approach, where we need to have referential, we need to have people uh, supervising maybe the, the premium license. We, we need to have a real global approach of the, of the data in the, in the enterprise. We will need different tools. i uh, show you that we will need maybe Power BI, but R, or Python code, uh, maybe some Azure resource. And we need maybe some people to do that, that we call data engineer, data scientist. Thank you for your attention. And I will answer some of your questions and I can give more uh, stickers if you want. <laughs> Um, I think it's, it's just my opinion, huh? um, but I think it's not a good idea because um, it, it, when you work on a laptop, um, you, you will have to download some R packages, um, and if you um, give your, your Power BI file to another people, uh, it has got to, to download the same packages, it's not always the same, maybe some little difference between, between them. And after that, uh, when you publish your Power BI with uh, some R package, you have to hope that uh, there are the same version of packages in the cloud. And I'm not sure. Um, and I, I've got um, some refresh issues when uh, I put some R code in, uh, in Power BI. So, do you have maybe one thing you, you can't do uh, with Power BI and you've done it in R? Or? I use it once and it worked, so I was wondering why. It okay. Was, so I was lucky. <laughs> if it works, it's okay, but I think it's it's quite difficult when you're working with other people. Is I, it I use Python? Uh, no, it's more. Uh, more tricky, uh, in, Py in Python you, you have some packages, okay? But on the Power BI service, you can just use um, Matplotlib, um, Seaborn, Scikit-learn, and NumPy. Just, uh, and, um, I don't remember, the last one, I don't remember. But that's only five uh, Python packages on the Power BI service. So be careful, be careful with some exotic packages. But I, I do that just for myself. I, I do R and, and Power BI, but not in a, uh, in, in a collaborative work. It's just my opinion. <laughs> so, yeah. The visual you showed uh, that uh, created cluster, clusters, was that a, a default feature or a custom one? Uh, it's, it's a default feature. Um, let's go on the, on the desktop. <laughs> but. Uh, um, okay, that's here. If you want to do that, um, I, you, um, you have to you have to use some simple measures. Uh, I think um, here is ju just a, a account. Here is something like a, a ratio, but um, I, you, you you can. Um, you can lose the option. I, I don't remember all the, the case, but 
sometimes you won't see um, automatically find clusters on your scatter plot. Um, it, it could be um, because of the complexity of, of the fields <laughs> you are giving to the visual. Yeah. But it's a default function. And also, does it depend on the kind of uh, uh, algorithmic or uh, uh, scale. linear yeah. scale? Uh, mm -hmm. Or no, it, it, it doesn't because uh, I, I use it with a linear uh, logarithmic scale and it works. It could depend uh, of, uh, um, if I remember, it could depend on the number of points you no. put on the scatter plot. But I'm, I'm not sure. But only only two dimensions. And when you, you do a real clustering, you use uh, maybe 10 or 20 dimensions, not two. Yeah, other questions? People who want stickers. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your attention and uh, have a good uh, a good event. Thank you. That's why I came. You're <laughs> Thank you for your questions. Oh. Thanks. I have a yeah. more question. Yeah. Uh, when you have a large data set, like uh, big data, um, yeah. and uh, you want to uh, exclude the outliers, yeah. do you have certain uh, programs or uh, yeah. uh, methods you yeah. use? Uh, I use box plots. You know, you know box plots. Yes. Um, when it's on the um, Ah, in, in French, we called it boîte à moustache, yeah. uh, <laughs> the boîte, and just the, the, the line upper and, and, and up oh, and yeah, down, yes, it's yes, called yeah. the moustache. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you, if, if points are uh, up, the, the must, um, up or down, of, uh, um, too, too well, high or too low, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, on, over the, the, the moustache, it's... it's um, excluded. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. You can exclude it, yeah. Oh, and that's yeah. within Power BI, or...? Uh, you can't. Um, you, you have to do some R code, maybe. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe as, uh, 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 the violin plot, maybe. You can do that. And, um, I would like to try the violin plot before the, the session. Yeah, on this one, <coughs> no, it's my minimum, maximum. Um, you, you have to try with some, some customs, yeah, box can, and whisker. I can probably look it up, but um, I was wondering if but, you usually <coughs> prepare the data uh, before it goes into Power yeah, BI. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in Databricks. Uh, and, and I only give to Power BI, that's what we call the golden data set. Mm -hmm. so yes, exactly. So it excludes it's, it's uh, performance as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think the, the new AI function in Power BI is just uh, to enrich the data, but it's not, no, it, it, it's it, not it, uh, the golden way. Yeah. It's just to, to win some um, the, um, the Gartner. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's yes. a method uh, that I said in the beginning, so yeah. methodology. Okay. Right. Yes. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> Une présentation. Ouais. Non, mais je l'avais déjà un peu. Euh, déjà un peu, euh, un, peu euh, un peu bossé pour un, pour un collègue, mais je l'avais jamais fait. Je l'avais jamais donné. Mais ouais. c'est génial. Tu, mais du coup, en fait, on, je crois qu'on n'en a pas parlé ce midi, mais en fait, moi, j'ai été engagé. Euh, dans l'équipe de, de Frédéric Garcia, bah justement pour amener ces, ces côtés data science. D'accord. Et euh, justement, en fait, je me pose pas de questions parce que sur, sur Internet, il y a peu de personnes qui savent les répondre. Ouais, c'est un petit peu touchy. Euh, c'est vrai que là, ils amènent pas mal de graphiques. J'ai vu ces derniers temps, bah, le, la, la courbe de, de saisonnalité que vous avez montrée, ouais. euh, bah, moi, je ne trouvé que récemment. Euh, ouais. C'est pas mal. En fait, c'est vrai que pour contrôler tout, euh, les données derrière. Ouais. Non, c'est vraiment en fin de chaîne. Il faut tout, la, tout le travail de qualité, il se fait avant. Ouais, c'est ça. Si, si on veut des paramétrer le modèle, 
ça devient, bah, on n'a pas la main dessus, c'est ça que je trouve ouais, un, ouais. un peu dommage. Ah, oui, oui. Et euh, c'est pour ça que j'avais commencé avec euh, Python et R, euh, pas télé mais c'est Et ouais, ouais, je suis pas, moi, je suis pas convaincu de, de, par le fait d'aller euh, exécuter le code Python et R dans Power BI. Ouais, c'est bah, ouais, théoriquement début, possible, mais alors, euh, pff, quelle galère. C'est, c'est ça, et puis on est vite restreint le truc, parce que c'est des visuels. Euh, je n'ai pas trouvé la, la fonction pour euh, montrer un tableau. Ouais, okay. non, non, bah, il faut, alors, euh, j'ai réussi à le faire en R, mais en Python, euh, ouais. bah, faut trouver, en fait, faut trouver une librairie graphique qui simule un tableau. Ah, mais du coup, qui sera pas bonne pour le plan, du coup Ouais, en plus, c'est... qui s'exportera pas quand on, si, pour les gens qui vont faire du PDF ou du PowerPoint, enfin, c'est, c'est, c'est que des, euh, mais... que des emmerdes. Mais... <rire> dans... Vous avez des préconisations, un peu, pour ça, parce que c'est vrai que nous, on pensait euh, l'amener via Power BI, c'est vrai qu'en mmh. exécutant et même en faisant des recherches, j'ai l'impression que il faut un peu scinder les deux. Bah ouais, ouais, ouais. non, mais je suis ouais. encore convaincu qu'il faut scinder les deux. Après, je ne suis pas convaincu non plus de l'approche qui est de dire on a du Power BI, puis on a, je sais pas, un serveur shiny ou, ou un truc comme ça pour, pour vraiment avoir que du un environnement complet en R ou des mmh. enfin, de visualisation R. Euh, bon, c'est pas évident. Enfin, euh, c'est pas évident aujourd'hui d'avoir un environnement unifié pour mmh. présenter la donnée. Mmh. Mmh. Ou alors, euh... Ou alors, c'est pas pour un biais. <rire> c'est ça, mais ouais. comme nous, notre cœur, euh, enfin, le... mm. ce qu'on utilise le plus, c'est pour un biais. Mais c'est... après, c'est... Ce, qu'il faut, ce qu'il faut voir, de toute façon, euh, c'est quel est le niveau de lecture des, des utilisateurs à la fin. Parce que, est-ce qu'ils vont vraiment, même un nuage de points Là, j'étais relativement content, il y avait peut-être un tiers de la salle qui, qui avait tout touché un peu au nuage de points. Mm. Bon, ça, j'ai un mal fou à je sors d'une mission, j'ai jamais réussi à imposer un nuage de points. Les gens disent, regarde en deux dimensions, on ne comprend plus rien. Et... Si on a tout qui nous CP, je veux bien. <rire> mais c'est vrai qu'en en deux dimensions... Enfin, ouais, mais juste génial. montrer une corrélation, en fait. On a une, oui, une donnée euh, qu'on cherche à comprendre, tac, elle est corrélée linéairement, c'est génial. Enfin, mais mais, mais que, non, ça passe pas. Est-ce que ça, ça passe sur Power BI ou sur un rapport oui, statistique c'est, c'est ça, c'est, 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 c'est peut-être ça aussi la bonne solution. C'est clair qu'il y a, euh, y a un moment, un niveau d'analyse simple qui se mmh. fait dans Power BI et c'est juste du croisement en deux dimensions les réduites, et sur des indicateurs qui ont été justement euh, rendus plus intelligents par le travail statistique. Et puis voilà, euh, régulièrement, on fait un rapport stat. Hein. Ça, je pense que c'est ce qui, a... mm. c'est, 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 c'est ce qui peut être pas mal. Hein. Ok, ouais. je vais devoir mm. dire à, à M. Garcia qu'il m'a engagé pour moi. <rire> bon, c'est... Ah merde <rire> J'espère pas, non. Bah non, il y a... Non. Je sais pas s'il y a quand même... Bah, il y a... C'est intéressant d'aller, d'aller mêler les deux approches. Hein. Il y a, les deux mondes peuvent s'apporter des... Non, c'est sûr, c'est sûr. L'un l'autre, hein, mais... On n'a pas encore l'outil qui est fait d'air, ça c'est ouais. sûr. Peut-être qu'avec euh, Power Apps, euh, ça va ramener des, des petits trucs sympas. Ouais. J'ai pas compris. Ouais, je sais pas. Donc je sais vraiment. Ouais, je sais pas. Je sais pas. Non, j'y crois, j'y crois pas. <rire> Il y a peut-être euh, la plateforme qui fait derrière un peu ça, c'est euh, Synapse. Enfin, c'est l'outil qui, qui a été renommé maintenant Synapse Analytics. Oui, ils m'ont montré ce matin. Euh, j'ai... Mais c'est avec Azure. C'est, c'est Azure, Azure, ouais, Azure Synapse. Ouais, euh... ouais. C'était l'ancien Data Warehouse, mais dans lequel ils vont rajouter euh, un environnement de calcul Spark. Okay. Ils vont rajouter tout ce qui est versionning de modèles de machine learning. Ce qui est aujourd'hui dans un autre, un, autre, un, autre, un autre bout. Et je crois qu'il va y avoir des interactions avec Power BI. Donc. Peut-être qu'à un moment, mm. ils sont en train de se dire OK, il y a une chaîne, un peu l'architecture que j'ai montrée, en mm. version un peu simplifiée, où on est obligé de mettre des petits bouts partout. On va peut-être tendre à un moment à un outil. Euh, ça pourrait être pas mal. Cool. J'ai, j'ai, j'ai fait vite, mais quoi, 14 ouais, ouais. Non, Je vais pas regarder euh, là. Mais... T'as, fait, t'as fait un peu plus court, mais. Ouais. ouais. Là, normalement, tu vois, t'as fini, je crois, à 35. Et euh, ça finit à 40. Ah oui. Bon. Tu t'es branché, toi Non, c'est la salle doit être encore. Euh...